We've all heard of Rome, we've all heard of Glastonbury, we've all heard of Canterbury, but here, uphill, is the more significant of all these places. And here are those mountains green, where according to legend and according to Blake's poem, those feet did walk in ancient times, here at Uphill, Bleeden Hill and across the Mendips to Charterhouse. It's one of those medieval legends. The teenage boy Jesus came here with Uncle Joe, Joseph of Arimathea, and they wandered along the trackway to the Mendips. It's where Joseph of Arimathea later planted his staff on Weary Hill at Glastonbury. All the stuff of medieval legend. When Bill of Normandy and his thuggish chums came across the channel in 1066, they brought with them power. Power buildings, power administration, powerful church. And this exemplifies that power. Christianity grew most successfully through a process of assimilation rather than subjugation. Christianity was adept at taking over previous organisations. It took over the sites of previous temples. It took over style and tradition. People became used to something. This was an era of clever theology and clever politics. But why build here? We're on the top of a windswept hill. Why should the Normans have decided to plonk a church on the top of uphill? It makes no sense, does it? Or does it? They were not likely to build their villages where the sea was going to flood the land. Oh, no, 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 it's only modern people do that. They were far too clever. This church is a Norman church. We've got proof of that. You only have to look at the architecture. We know that it's Norman. We know that it's been here since the 11th century and possibly before that. See, the Normans tended to build their churches on the foundations of Saxon churches and the Saxons often built their churches on the foundations of pagan temples. Not far from here, there is a pagan temple just across on Breen Down. We know that because the archaeologists from Bristol University unearthed it. So here we have paganism, Saxon Christianity, Norman Christianity, all here on uphill. One amusing legend tells us that the church actually should have been built down at the bottom of the hill rather than on top of it. Apparently the village workmen were laying the foundations and each time they went to bed at night, the rocks were taken mysteriously up to the top of the hill. And after about a week of doing this, you know, the workmen were getting a bit fed up and realised it was a message. The message clearly to build on the hill, not at the bottom of the hill. And so St Nicholas was built here. Nice story, no truth in it probably, but a nice story nonetheless. And so this church today, this windswept hilltop church, is no longer a place of worship, but it is open for the tourists, it is open for the visiting historians, it is open for casual passers-by, and it's a repository for the bones and for the memories and for the souls of a thousand years of past worshippers. Come with me through the Norman door of this ancient church. Look at this artwork. Which village artist carved that nearly a thousand years ago? Come into the roofless nave. Look to the tower. It's unusual. The tower is in the middle of the church, not at the west end. Come through this nave where the villagers would have sat at mass for century after century underneath what would have been a screen removed at the time of the Reformation. Here are the remains of the doorway, up through and out there across a screen which would have kept the congregation here and the priests, the sacred ministers, 
at that side. But come with me now into all that's left of the nave. Bones and buildings, the stuff of proof. This church has stood the test of time. It's been here since the Norman, just after the Norman Conquest. It's been here for 932 years. By the middle of the 19th century, England's population was rising rapidly. Western Supermare's population was rising rapidly. And so was the population of Uphill. But we were seeking our creature comforts as well. And for the local villagers to climb the hill on a windswept November, December, January Sunday, that was not the way things were going to be done. And so the villagers decided to build a new church down in the village. Interestingly, built by the same architect who built the town hall in Western Supermare. From that moment on, this church, the old church on the hill, became a mortuary chapel and a place heaving with centuries of memory. Here lies someone who made it into the history books. This was a policeman, but he was no ordinary copper. Superintendent Frank Frost of New Scotland Yard. The famous, the notorious murderer, Dr. Hawley Crippin, who'd murdered his wife in the bath. He'd escaped from England's law enforcement. He was on a ship midway across the Atlantic, going to America. Superintendent Frost used the latest wireless technology to radio ahead to the ship and then to the United States, where the man was arrested, brought back to England, put on trial, found guilty and hanged. And the man responsible for catching him lies here. Today, weary old St Nicholas stands on the top of the hill here at Uphill, a thousand year reminder of the traditions of this country. It's a charming, if slightly battered, thousand year old treasure within no more than 200 yards of Western College University campus.